Hello! Welcome to a very special day indeed. If you like cars and you like watches, today's going to blow your mind. As you can probably tell, we are at McLaren HQ, otherwise known as the MTC, which is the McLaren Technology Center. Uh, we have been granted this phenomenal 720S to drive down to Le Mans in, but before we do that, we are here for a very special reason. Not only are we collecting the car, but we are collecting a very special new watch. I'll go into that in more detail shortly. First of all, we cannot not ignore what is inside this building because the cars and the history behind us are super special. So we're gonna go inside, give you guys a look around because also a significant moment is it's not every day that you get granted access to film behind these doors. So let's go and check out some very special cars. Then we're gonna be collecting an obscenely cool watch, jumping in a 720S and driving down to Le Mans. Let's hit it. Okay, so I'm not sure there's a feasibly better, more appropriate place to start our journey to the Le Mans Classic than standing next to the 1995 Le Mans winning McLaren F1. Uh, I don't know, I have, this is the famous GTR. This is the car that really ignited the heroic success story that surrounded the F1. And to think that we are now driving down in one of their latest road cars, the bloodline starts here. Uh, don't forget the whole point of Le Mans cars back then was that they were homologated for road use. So the cars that we are gonna see over the next few days, there was all road going variations of them. Now, while this particular car won the race, there was also other F1 GTRs in that race that not only completed the race, they actually drove back home as well. I don't know if we're ever gonna see an era like that again, where a car can be so successful, so fast, such a pure thoroughbred race car, and then drive off the track on the road, fill up at Tesco on the way home, and just crack on. It's an unbelievable achievement. Um, if you think about Le Mans cars now, they are so far removed from what a road car looks like that, um, yeah, whether we'll ever have that again, I don't know. But to be stood here next to the Le Mans winning GTR, there is now the road going LM, of which they only made five of. Uh, this one is currently owned by McLaren and was famously promised to Lewis Hamilton by Ron Dennis if he won the next world championship and then we have the long tail next to it. Uh, to be stood next to this on our way down to the Le Mans Classic is so poignant, I'm actually getting goosebumps. It's incredible. George, it's not every day we both get to wear Richard Mills. <laughs> no, no it is not. <laughs> so just to uh, give you guys a spot of context, um, the idea behind this watch is that it was a collaboration together with Richard Mille uh, to celebrate the launch of the McLaren Senna. Now, the Senna was made in 500 units. These will also be made only in 500 units. We have what two of those 500 here. Um, and the idea is that Senna customers will get first re refusal on these watches. If you order a Senna, you can also have your car number engraved on the case of your watch. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, these in the UK, they're coming in at about 170 grand. Yeah. We worked out with tax around about 173,000, which equates to a well-specced 570S. Yes. Spider, maybe. Yeah. With some carbon. <laughs> Um, speaking of, of uh, carbon, these things, this is like, I think this is forged carbon. The orange bits are actually quartz. <laughs> the layers of quartz in it are so thin. And the details which sort of qualify it as a McLaren RM are little things like the crown being a center wheel. Yep. The um, switch gear left and right of the crown replicates a 720 headlight. It has McLaren top and bottom of face obviously tie in with the Senna and just like a McLaren, the chassis is carbon fiber. So <laughs> and the detail is just It's incredible, right? Bonkers. That suits you, mate. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna fit this somewhere. So it's got this two stage, almost three stage clasp. So you fit it initially to your wrist by a more conventional 
clasp like so. So you thread that through there. Third notch from the top, sir. There you are. And then once you've fitted it conventionally like so, you can then undo it like a normal watch strap. That's pretty good, actually. I like that. And of course, every single component on this is either titanium or carbon or some sort of forged alloy from an asteroid or something. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Walked out of some buildings with some pretty crazy stuff, but never an RM on my wrist. I've been wondering what it's like to sort of live with one of these ever since I first saw one, and now I'm gonna get to spend the weekend with one. Ultimately, I don't get to keep it, but um, supercars and super watches. Let's head to France. Okay, so we're now on the road. We've left McLaren. We have a 170 grand watch on the wrist. We're in a 720S heading to Le Mans Classic. We've just been hanging around the original F1 GTR that won Le Mans and made this brand and that car so famous and valuable. I mean, it's the full immersion. I can't believe it. I've never done Le Mans Classic. The caliber of the cars we're gonna be seeing over the next few days are incredible. But now we gotta hit the road. We gotta get the channel tunnel. So we're here actually at a really good time, which means we can go and like chill and have a Starbucks and stuff. We can do some cool car spotting because during events like the Mon, the Mon Classic, etc., this is where cars congregate before they get on board. There's a the 512 channel. BBI Ooh, over good there. Good spot, George. Good spot. Is it a classic 911? I think you're right. Uh, coffee and coffee. Uh, car spotting. I mean, you know, we like to make the, both, the best of a situation. Rain does not hold us back. with the 720S. This one in particular, because it's not fitted with the sports exhaust, is the fact that they don't sound that great. Which, when you go for short bursts in a supercar, granted, I agree, and I'm the first to put my hand up that they do lack some of that initial audible delight and emotion that you might otherwise expect from a supercar. However, we are on a cross-continental cruise. We've driven from McLaren in Woking, and we're gonna be crunching hundreds of miles all the way down to Le Mans. And actually, the last thing that I would want on this journey is a loud, barbling exhaust. So this is why I love to spend a long time with cars, to, to be able to sort of provide you guys a genuine insight into this car. I've said it in the past, it's blurred the lines between supercar and hypercar because the performance is insane. It's 720 PS, it's almost 700 horsepower at the wheels. Um, so the vast amount of torque it's got makes it such an effortless Grand Tourer, but the practicality as well. You don't have this barbling exhaust or this deep bassy tone which is droning at you all the time. George and I have been cranking out the tunes, sound system's fantastic, we've got a plenty of space, and we've only used half of it. We could definitely do, certainly a lad's road trip. I would reckon if George wanted to bring a bag as well and be a bit of a diva, that'd be fine. We've got space in the back. All in all, living with this car, it's like this sort of super GT. It's, I don't know a car quite like it. When I talk to people, they're like, how does it compare against this? How does it compare against that? The only car that I think this car compares to is actually a GT3. And that's, I mean, this thing would whoop its ass from a, a performance point of view. But from a living with practicality point of view, you know, the space behind the seats is huge, big boot, comfortable, you can do a, a long cruise in it. Granted, this doesn't sound anywhere near as good as a GT3, but I think on a run like this, having that fast, 
thick, effortless talk to waft you along these auto routes. It's phenomenal. I'm going to uh, pick George's brain towards the end of this trip and get his thoughts because I think it's the first time that you've spent time in a 720. Yep, first time in a McLaren. In a McLaren? In a McLaren, yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to debrief with George at the end of this trip and see what his thoughts are on the McLaren 720s. Oh, yeah. Hotel. Come to my humble hotel room. Really humble. But, um, so, George, how many hours behind are we? In regards to time or in regards to <laughs> life, how late we were? Life, life, time. About three by the end about of About three, yeah. So, we did expect to get here before sundown. That went out of the window as soon as the channel tunnel was delayed, like two hours. Um, but it's been cool. It's been a good journey. Crunching miles in the 720. Now we're at the hotel. This is going to be our base for the next two days. And we're here with, I'm not sure if you can see that, light embossing. Richard Mille, I always love a good gift bag. I think we should share the gift bag before we sign off. Posh, oh no, there's uh, Fernando Alonso looking like some kind of hologram with uh, a Senna watch on it, I think. It looks very similar. It looks very similar, yeah. Posh book. Le Mans Classic, 6th, 7th, 8th, 2018. Oh, there we go, look. I mean, I didn't, I swear to you that wasn't on purpose. I just pulled it out on. So this is the watch that we've been wearing all day. Uh, I'm not sure if we've managed to capture it that beautifully, but um, this is what it's all about. Despite the fact that this is the GTR version, that's the, the prototype of the track only Senna, which is launching soon. Oh, look at the embossing on that, dude. Oh. Le Mans Classic. See what else is going on. Oh, they put a lot of effort into the detail of this stuff. Look at that. What's in here? Ooh, Ooh. passes. There we go. Anyway, I think that's time to sign off, George. What do you think? We got another epic day tomorrow. Um, tune in tomorrow. We are finding out how billionaires play with cars. Ciao.